Carboxylic acids are weak organic acids. Now, all acids are proton donors, and the more stable the resulting anion, in this case the carboxylate ion, the greater the tendency for proton donation to occur in the first place, and so the stronger the acid. When ethanoic acid reacts with water, the name of our carboxylate ion is the ethanoate ion, and we can think of the ethanoate ion as the conjugate base to the original acid. The position of this equilibrium is described by the acid dissociation constant Ka, which can be determined by dividing the concentration of the products by the concentration of the reactants. And we find that when we do this for ethanoic acid, the Ka is around about 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 mole per decimeter cubed. Now this number is clearly less than 1, which tells us that the concentration of the products is less than the concentration of the reactants, and the position of equilibrium lies to the left. Which helps us to understand that ethanoic acid is a weak acid, as really not that many ethanoic acid molecules donate protons to form the ethanoate ions in solution. The negative log of the Ka is known as the pKa, and this is the value that we use to compare the strength of acids. The lower the pKa, the stronger the acid. So minus the log of the Ka for ethanoic acid, so that would be minus the log of 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5, comes out to be 4.8. Now, carboxylic acids aren't the only organic molecules to contain an OH group, and yet they are considerably more acidic than, say, an alcohol or a phenol. So, as we saw, pKa for ethanoic acid was 4.8. For an alcohol, the pKa is around about 16, and for a phenol, around about 9.9. .9. Now remember, this is a logarithmic scale, so this is telling us that carboxylic acids are hugely more acidic than either alcohols or phenols. Why might that be? Well, the answer comes down to the stability of the anion, as I alluded to earlier. Let's have a look at this reaction between ethanoic acid and water. We could imagine that the oxygen in the water uses its lone pair of electrons to steal the hydrogen out of the OH group, and the electrons from the OH bond end up on the oxygen. The result is our carboxylate ion. Now, carboxylic acids can stabilize the charge on the anion by resonance. So what happens is, is that the negative charge on this oxygen, that pair of electrons, could move to the oxygen carbon, and electrons from the double bond of this carbon oxygen move on to the oxygen. The result is that we have two resonant forms of the ethanoetan, with the negative charge essentially delocalized over both of the oxygen atoms. So we could put nice square brackets around that, and we could add arrows to show the movement of electrons as we move from one resonant form to the other. And we often see this summarized with a version of our carboxylate ion looking like so. When phenols are behaving as acids, they also lose the proton from the OH group to form the phenoxide ion or conjugate base. And once again, phenols are able to stabilize the negative charge on the oxygen by delocalizing it into the ring of delocalized electrons. Alcohols, however, have no ability to help stabilize this negative charge. In fact, alkyl groups are electron donating, making the whole situation a little worse, not better. As a result, because alcohols can't stabilize their negative charge in the same way that phenols and carboxylic acids can, they don't tend to lose their proton in the first place, and therefore they rarely behave as acids. The position of equilibrium lies very strongly to the left. 
you can revise everything you need to know about carboxylic acids and their reactions, as well as the chemistry behind acids and bases with crunch chemistry. There's a link in the blurb below. I look forward to seeing you next time.